Hello, I'm Brian Burner, and from the heart of our capital city, welcome to Awards Night. First, it was the BAFTAs, then it was the Emmys. And now in this unprecedented year, it's the turn of the 4G Studios annual awards to go virtual and online. Coming up, we get to celebrate the best of our athletes, our coaches, our officials, our volunteers, our clubs, and the thousands of runners up and down the country who really have gone the extra mile this year. Now, we're interested to see how you've been celebrating at home. So share, please, your pictures and your comments on tonight's awards. Go to the Scottish Athletics Twitter and use the hashtag 4J Awards. And now, in the best tradition of awards ceremonies, we begin with a word from our sponsors. We at 4J Studios are keen to see Scottish success on the world stage in as many areas as possible. And athletics is an area where we Scots punch well above our weight. We began our sponsorship of athletics with local club Team East Lothian, where we support junior athletes. And when approached by Scottish Athletics CEO Mark Munro, it seemed a natural step for us to also sponsor the National Academy programme to help with Scottish Athletics' great work developing Scotland's next generation of star athletes. Following the success of the partnership, we were delighted to be invited to become the headline sponsor for the summer track and field season of athletics competitions and to help celebrate the successes of Scottish athletics by supporting the annual awards event. 4G Studios' partnership with Scottish athletics demonstrates a commitment to promoting positive health and well-being throughout our business, our communities and the global audience of gamers. Scottish Athletics has shown successfully during these challenging times that it continues to encourage inclusive participation in sport and we look forward to continuing to support that success at all levels. My business partner Paddy Burns and I set up 4G Studios in 2005 and we have offices in East Linton and East Lothian and Dundee and we're best known for developing Minecraft on Microsoft, Sony and Nintendo games consoles. Scotland is known as a video games development hotbed and is responsible for some of the world's best-selling games. Our first awards this evening recognise the achievements of the Jog Scotland community. Jog Scotland groups encourage achievement at every level, from beginners to ultra runners. Led by passionate jog leaders who believe in bringing the joy of physical activity to everyone, they have excelled themselves in this difficult year. Virtual challenges, online chats and the careful reintroduction of group jogging when rules allowed have kept the Jog Scotland community spirit very much alive and well, offering vital support to members in these challenging times. Our first award this evening celebrates the Jog Scotland Achiever of the Year. And the nominees are Diane Davidson, Jed Joggers, Yvonne Robertson, Jog Scotland, Hazelhead, and Vicky Sharples, Newton Stewart Striders. Announcing the winner is the Chair of Scottish Athletics, Ian Beattie. The winner of our first award this evening is Diane Davidson from Jed Joggers. Diane joined Jed Joggers at the group's outset, unsure of her ability, but that soon changed and she went on to achieve great things, including a silver medal in the GB Ultra Manchester to Liverpool race. During lockdown, Diane took on multiple challenges, including a virtual Land's End to John O'Groats, where she was first female finisher. She hasn't forgotten her roots and works with local schools to encourage youngsters to keep running. Our second shortlist this evening is for Jog Scotland Jog Leader of the Year and the nominees are Alan Faulkner and Suzanne Matteson, Inverness Jog Scotland Fran McCulloch, Easton Bartonshire Leisure Paul Wilson, Charter International Run Crew Announcing the winner is Great Britain International, Zoe Clark It gives me magnificent pleasure to announce the winners are Alan Faulkner and Suzanne Matteson Alan and Suzanne have always been encouraging and supportive jog leaders, but really excelled during lockdown. Alan sent countless challenges to keep members active, and Suzanne logged every single mile run by members in spreadsheets, collectively running 25,000 miles around the world. 
Alan and Suzanne also stayed connected with members so that nobody felt isolated or alone. Now we move on to our Jog Scotland Group of the Year nominees, and they are Invergordon Morning Movers, the Jiggly Joggers, On the Run, Cumbernault. Robert Nisbet from Sam H will announce our winner. And the winner is Jiggly Joggers. Jiggly Joggers was founded in 2018 to provide an inclusive, non-judgmental group for plus-size women with little or no running experience. In two years, the group has grown from 10 to 130 members. During lockdown, the group held socially distant relays, which raised thousands of pounds for local charities and gave boxes of treats to frontline key workers in local care homes. This year, they have been awarded funding from Big Lottery to allow them to expand further. Our final Jog Scotland Award is the Sam H Mental Wellbeing Award. This award recognises people and groups who've used jogging to improve their own or others' mental wellbeing. Robert will again announce the winner. The nominees are Chloe Allen, Jog Dalgetty Bay, Mums on the Run in Varuri, and the Midlothian Pink Ladies. And the winners are Mums on the Run in Varuri. Mums on the Run in Varuri has always provided support for new mums to return to exercise safely and that did not change during lockdown. Weekly online challenges were set along with virtual social events like bingo and quiz nights. Leader Jess Parson encouraged self-care, engaging with the outdoors and mindfulness. More than a running group, the group has maternal mental health at the forefront. That concludes our Jog Scotland Awards. And as always, they're a great advert for our sport and that it truly is for anyone and everyone. Our next Perpetual Awards are presented annually to some very deserving athletes and volunteers within athletics in Scotland. The first of these awards will be the Dallas Trust Award, which is presented to an athlete selected by the trustees. Without further ado, let's find out who the winner is. Bob McSween and I agreed that the trophy should be awarded this year to a young aspiring athlete recently named Scotland's Young Sportswoman of the Year and I'm delighted to present the trophy to Megan Keith. Thank you very much. Um, I guess I'd like to say a big thank you to the Dallas Trust for nominating me. Um, it seems crazy looking at the list of people, uh, athletes who have won it before me. It's a massive honour. Um, I'd also like to say thank you to my coach and my running group for keeping training fun and keeping me motivated and the whole uh, club at Inverness Harriers who have been a massive support. It's been brilliant. Um, and I'd also like to thank my family, I'm sure they'd, <laughs> they'd like a mention. Um, and just everyone who's cheered for me along the way, it's been brilliant. So yeah, big thank you. The Tom Stelly Sword is often the most popular trophy we present at the awards night and this year you're all slightly safer as there'll be no opportunity for the winner to show this off in the bar later. It's presented to individuals who've been deemed to have contributed the most to Scottish athletics in the past 12 months. For this year, the Tom Stelly Sword is awarded to Andrew Stevenson and David Lothian. For the 15th consecutive year, Callender Park and Falkirk played host to the Lindsay's Scottish Athletics National Cross Country Championships. The duo of Falkirk Victoria Harriers have shared the duties of Clark of Course and Chief Course Builder. However, the 2020 Championships presented a major challenge. Rain and flooding meant most of the usual courses were either inaccessible or underwater. Following a course visit, they identified, designed and measured new courses with just 10 days to go. The weather on the day was not kind, with high winds, showers and flooding. The course was even rerouted during the day's racing. Over the last few years, many challenges have been addressed and overcome with the aid of Andy and David's local knowledge, supported by a great team from Falkirk Victoria Harriers. Congratulations to Andy and Dave. 
And the good news is, the boys have promised a glorious day like this in Falkirk next year. Every year, the annual general meeting of Scottish Athletics welcomes nominees to become honorary life members. This year is no different in that respect, and we've got three nominees for 2020. The new honorary life members are Dave Finlayson. Dave initially became involved in athletics as a parent helper when his children began competing for Lasswade EC. He then got involved in coaching, and from 2000, his interests moved towards officiating, particularly the photo finish. He quickly identified aspects of photo finish which could benefit from improvement, a pivotal movement within the discipline and a turning point for everyone involved. Moira Maguire. Moira competed for Great Britain in the long jump and high jump at the 1969 European Championships in Athens. She also competed at Commonwealth and Olympic Games. After retiring as an athlete, Moira served as the convener of the Track and Field Commission and the Track and Field Selection Committee. There are a few top athletes who move from participation to administration, officiating and coaching within the sport, but Moira is one of them. Finally, Joyce Whiten. Joyce's athletic career began in 1977 when she joined Shettleston Harriers Ladies AC. When Shettleston later merged and became known as City of Glasgow AC, Joyce became a committee member and team manager. Her main discipline as an official is as a level four track judge, where she's been selected for the London 2017 World Championships and the Glasgow Commonwealth Games, to name but a few. We look forward to welcoming our new honorary life members to next year's awards dinner. The phrase, a year like no other, is one that's gonna crop up many times tonight. For many of us, this has been a time of virtual events and socially distant training. But let's not forget that there were times where we could meet in competition. From cross country to the indoor season and onto the open series, we met, we ran, we jumped and we threw. And our photographer, Bobby Gavin, was always there. Let's check out his review of the year. Thank you.
don't forget, throughout this evening, we'll be watching out on Twitter for your photographs. If you're having a watch party with your club or group, post your screenshots on Twitter with a hashtag 4J Awards, and we'll do our best to share the best of them later in the programme. Some great memories. Moving on, let's hear from Mark Munro, Chief Executive of Scottish Athletics, to introduce our next section of awards. Volunteers are the lifeblood of our sport in Scotland. Without their dedication and enthusiasm, the sport would not survive. Thank you to each and every one of the dedicated volunteers making athletics in Scotland what it is. The next set of awards recognise the incredible work of some of our club volunteers and technical officials. The nominations for 4G Studios Volunteer of the Year are Richard Layton, Bella Houston Roadrunners, Gregor Malcolm, Edinburgh University Hares and Hounds, and Michael Wright, Central AC. To announce the winner, we'll hear once more from Mark Munro. The winner for Volunteer of the Year is Gregor Malcolm. Gregor planned, developed and executed a world-class cross-country event, the biggest Bucks cross-country in the history with over 1,800 athletes taking part, as well as over 1,000 Edinburgh University students taking part in the 5K road race, all whilst running a full training schedule and in his fourth year of his degree. Our next volunteer award is for Technical Official of the Year. As we know, behind every performance, there's an official. And with the competition calendar as it was this year, officials have been working diligently behind the scenes to deliver track and field and endurance events, both in person and virtually. So the nominees for 2020 are Dolene Galbraith, Giffnick North AC, Diane Ramsey, Victoria Park, City of Glasgow, and Nick Stone, Nairn Area Amateur Athletics Club. Announcing the winner is Great Britain International Zoe Clark. Technical Official of the Year goes to Diane Ramsey. Diane Ramsey is a former 400 meter athlete who competed in the 2014 Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. Having retired from competitive athletics, Diane was keen to get involved in officiating. Diane is an excellent level three track official and is now working towards completing her level four upgrading. During lockdown, Diane created a Lockdown Together Apart video, which got everyone's attention and applause when it hit social media. Her video also would be useful as an advertisement to those considering involvement in officiating. Following on from Technical Official of the Year, our next officiating award is the Raymond Hutchison Award for Services to Officiating. This recipient was a very accomplished endurance runner in the day and on retirement became involved in coaching and officiating originally as a field judge. They're now qualified highly in track, endurance, field, photo finish and timekeeping. As an international technical official, they were seen on duty at the 2012 London Olympics and Paralympics and the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. An excellent mentor for new and less experienced officials and an extremely popular member of the Scottish and UK athletics community. The winner is Andy Law. To introduce our next set of club awards, please welcome Colin Hutchison, Scottish Athletics Head of Development. Clubs are fundamentally important to the health of athletics in Scotland. They provide the bedrock of the sport, developing athletes to reach their full potential and go as far as they can. This year, we are delighted to include some new and amended awards. Firstly, I would like to introduce an additional annual award category dedicated to the late Janice Eaglesham, the Janice Eaglesham MBE Para Development Club of the Year. Janice was a passionate advocate for para sport in Scotland and beyond, and a well-respected coach of many of our most successful para athletes. This new award recognises the work clubs across Scotland do to promote para athletics to their membership and integration of athletes with a disability into the wider club structure. Secondly, with thanks to 4G Studios, we are also awarding a special 2020 Innovation Award this year, recognising the inspirational work carried out during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
I congratulate all the nominees in what has been a hotly contested year for club categories. It's time now to present for the first time the Janice Eaglesham MBE Para Development Club of the Year Award. This new award will recognise innovation shown by clubs to develop athletics provision for and the performances of athletes with a disability. This year, attention was also paid to the work done by clubs during the pandemic. And the nominees are Fife AC, Forth Valley Flyers and Perth Strathtay Harriers. Announcing the winner is Paralympic champion Libby Clegg. The first winner of the Janice Eagleson MBE Para Development Club of the Year award is Perth Strathtay Harriers. Perth Strathtay have embraced the inclusive approach over a number of years of developing athletes with physical, sensory and learning disabilities. The club has a simple approach coach the athlete, not the disability. An amended award for this year, the Impact and Innovation Club of the Year. It's in recognition of the great work that's going on in athletics clubs across Scotland. It recognises the clubs that have made a major impact within their local communities over the last 12 months in innovative and inspiring ways. And the nominees are Bella Houston Roadrunners, Linlithgow AC and Nairn Area AAC. The presenter of this award will be Chris Vanderkill from Sponsors 4J Studios. I'm delighted to announce that the winner of the Impact and Innovation Club of the Year are Bella Houston Roadrunners. In its 20th anniversary year, the club have come together in a remarkable way that merits recognition. Through lockdown, members have organised activities to continue training, recognising that mental health is just as important as physical health. Despite not meeting for training in months, the club has rarely felt more together, with a lockdown easing, a strong plan in place and a supportive experience for many members, the club is optimistic it can return to training stronger than ever and hopefully mark its 20th anniversary as perhaps the strongest in its short history. This award focuses on clubs who've been successful on hills and fells, on the road and cross country and have shown that they've met the needs of athletes through being innovative in their approach to off-track athletics. And the nominees are Central AC, Edinburgh University Hares and Hounds and Giffnick North AC. Our presenter for this is Jack McConnell. And the winners of the 4G Studios Off-Track Club of the Year for 2020 are Central AC. Central AC again hit the high spots for individual and team performance, particularly in cross country. And in this challenging year, they've continued their strong behind the scenes support of off track events in the Scottish calendar. Winning blue ribbon events with the men's title at the National Cross Country Championship for the 10th successive year and the National Cross Country Relay for the 10th time. COVID-19 has created many challenges, but the club have acted positively to create their own special membership with a fitness group for novice runners, with the aim of converting those that want to into full club runners. Keeping people running through this difficult spell has involved both club and individual member efforts across all the ages. It's time now to present the 4J Studios Innovation Award. This one-off award in light of the 2020 global pandemic will recognise the innovative approaches shown across our sport to engaging athletes, clubs and volunteers during the past few months. The response to the pandemic has been fantastic across all areas and we really are thankful to 4J Studios for allowing us to recognise this with a special award. And the nominees are Paul Allen and Nicola Moriarty, Petrivi AAC, Annan District AC, and West End Roadrunners. The winners will be announced by Chris Vanderkill. With such a tough year, it's been great to see so many innovative ideas. 
The greatly deserved winners of this award are Annan District Athletic Club, which is a small club with a big heart and soul. Their challenge at the start of lockdown was to look after the health and well-being of their athletes. They've succeeded in doing so with over 20 various virtual races in six different series, which have kept spirits high among their members. Almost every weekend since lockdown has been taken up with an event and every athlete that took part in the virtual series received a medal. We've already seen Bobby Gavin's review of the year, but what about you? A lot of the athletics action has taken place this year at home, in living rooms, pavements, parks and trails, in small groups or socially distanced and captured only by selfies. Let's take a look now at a review of the year with a difference, the one as seen by you. Thanks to everyone who's tweeted us photos of you enjoying the awards night at home. A good looking bunch as always. Keep them coming in. The hashtag is 4J Awards. It's time now to introduce our final two sets of awards, which recognise the performances of Scottish athletes and coaches. Let's hear from Stephen Maguire, Head of Performance and Coaching at Scottish Athletics. It's my privilege to talk about our next awards, our Performance Coach of the Year, our Club Coach of the Year, and our Development Coach of the Year. Coaching has been particularly challenging over this past few months. We've talked an awful lot about COVID, but the creativity and ingenuity of our coaches 
has been absolutely remarkable. The performances of the athletes, the ability of the coaches to interact, to work in the likes of Zoom and Teams and to do things they haven't done before, but to keep athletes motivated. And ultimately, the performances have shown that in Scotland, we have some tremendous coaches. An inspiration and a motivation, a font of knowledge, and sometimes just a shoulder to cry on. Coaches are a vital part of the partnership and team that provides the platform for performance. And this first award recognises the huge role that the coach or coaches play within our clubs. The nominees for Club Coach of the Year are Alan Erickson, Perth Strathy Harriers, Alison Duffin and Joanne McNair, Motherwell AC, and Ruth and Rachel Watson, Aberdeen AAC. To announce the winner, we'll pass back to Chris van der Kool from 4J Studios. The winner is Alan Erickson. Alan is the lead coach for the Sprints Group at Perth Strathtay Harriers. Typically working with athletes from 12 years to senior, his enthusiasm is matched by his professional approach to training and competition preparation. The evidence of his coaching team's success has been a string of national podium successes. This year, with the added challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic, he reacted swiftly to the lockdown, providing individual track sessions for each athlete, as well as strength and conditioning sessions to compensate for loss of gym sessions. He's dedicated and committed to athletics and provides a positive and engaging learning experience for all the athletes he works with. Continuing our appreciation for all the coaches out there, we move on to the award for Development Coach of the Year. This award recognises coaches of emerging junior athletes, supporting their continued development to be the best that they can be. And the nominees are Billy Glasgow, Giff McNorth AC, Francis Smith, Petrivi AAC, and Ross Cairns, Inverness Harriers AAC. And to announce the winner, Please welcome back our Dallas Trust winner, Megan Keith. I'm very pleased to announce the winner of the 4J Studios Development Coach of the Year for 2020 is Ross Cairns. Ross is an endurance coach with Inverness Harriers, focused on the development of young athletes. His coaching style is athlete-focused, encouraging athletes to be comfortable in their own development and in the range they wish to pursue, with everyone celebrating each other's progress in training and in competition. As well as coaching, Ross has driven the development of North Training Camps, open to all clubs and inclusive of athletes with additional needs, and is a member of the Coach Apprentice Programme and leads the North District Road and Cross Country Commission. Our final coaching award for this evening is Performance Coach of the Year. This will have been a particularly challenging year with the postponement of the Olympics, Paralympics and European Championships and many changes of plan for our coaches to work through. The nominees for Performance Coach of the Year are Andy Young and Jeff Whiteman. Stephen Maguire will announce the winner. The winner of Performance Coach of the Year is Andy Young. Andy's best known for his incredible work with Laura Muir and Gemma Ricci but his influences stretch well beyond that. We've seen records falling this year to other athletes in his group, including Eloise Walker and Aaron Wallace. And I think that really shows the depth and quality of the training group Andy's establishing in Glasgow. But his work with Laura and Gemma is what really grabbed the headlines and rightly so. Gemma ended the year with an 800 meter world lead and Laura a 1500 meter world lead. Between the two of them, they had 11 wins in seven countries. Andy's athletes really making sure that Scottish middle distance went global. To introduce our athlete categories, please welcome back Stephen Maguire. This year, we felt it best to call our athletes awards performer of the year, given that some disciplines like ill running and para were denied a lot of their usual international competition opportunities. It's been really challenging for all athletes to stay fit and healthy and to perform when the opportunities did arise. I'd like to personally congratulate all the nominees for their performances this year. 
I'm really looking forward to seeing what you're all capable of next year. We begin with Under 17 Performer of the Year. It's the youngest of our performance categories and the worthy nominees are Alison Bell, Giftnick North AC, Rebecca Grieve, Petrivi AAC, Anna Headley, Fife AC, and Katie Johnson, Edinburgh AC. To announce the winner, we have Scottish Athletics President, Ron Morrison. The winner of the 4J Studios Under 17 Performer of the Year is Anna Headley. The Fife AC athlete has enjoyed regular success in her career. Anna won the Lindsay's Scottish Athletics short course cross country title at Kirkcaldy and followed that up with a victory at the National in Falkirk. In the British cross country challenge, she won at Liverpool and Stirling and finished second overall in the challenge. The Under 20 Performer of the Year is a hotly contested category every awards night with spectacular performances in all the disciplines. The nominees for this year are Scott Brindley, North Ayrshire AC, Joe Ewing, Edinburgh AC, Megan Keith, Inverness Harriers AAC and Eloise Walker, Edinburgh AC. Jack McConnell returns to announce the winner of this award. And I'm delighted to announce that the winner from Inverness Harriers, after performing well all year, is Megan Keith. Winning her second award of the evening, an exponent of cross country and road racing, Megan blew away the opposition at various levels in a superb year. On the road, Megan set an under 20 course record at the Armagh 3K road race with nine minutes 27 for ninth place in the overall women's race. In cross country, she was peerless with wins at Stirling and Falkirk, and she then added the British Cross Challenge title at Loughborough. In the Euro Cross at the end of 2019, Megan was placed 27 and picked up a team gold medal. Showing that age is no barrier to athletic performance, this next category recognises Masters athletes who've performed with distinction this year. The nominees for Masters Performer of the Year are Philippa Millage, Victoria Park, City of Glasgow, and Joasha Zakchevsky, Dumfries Running Club. Announcing the winner is the Chair of Scottish Athletics, Ian Beatty. The winner is Joe Zagreski. Effectively stranded in Australia during COVID-19 lockdown, Jo captured the Scottish 24-hour record with a run of 236.5 kilometres to beat the previous mark by more than three kilometres. In Canberra, Jo finished second overall and the performance places her fifth in the UK all-time list for 24-hour running. She also broke three other records en route, the British 200k record, the Scottish 100-mile record and the Scottish 12-hours record. And now for our final award from what I hope has been a really enjoyable evening. It's Performer of the Year. There have been no major championship performances this year, but there have still been plenty of fantastic achievements all over Europe and beyond. And the nominees are Callum Hawkins, Josh Kerr, Ailish McColgan, Laura Muir, Gemma Riki, Stephanie Twell, Jake Whiteman, and Yuasha Zekchevsky. It's quite a short list, isn't it? The honour of announcing the winner goes to Chris Vanderkull. I'm delighted to confirm the winners of 4J Studios Performer of the Year are jointly Laura Muir, Gemma Riki, and Jake Whiteman. Laura Muir has once again delivered great consistency across her racing, despite the long spell of inactivity via lockdown. She took down a Dame Kelly Holmes record outdoors for 1,000 metres with a strong run in Monaco and delivered a number of other classy track performances. 
Laura won all three 1500 metre races in sub four minutes and setting the three fastest times in the world this year with her Berlin performance, the world lead. Gemma Ricci has had a breakthrough year, losing only one 800 metre race. She's run five of the world's top 14 times and led the world indoor rankings with a 157.91, a superior time to the world outdoor best this year. Outdoors, there were a couple of British under 23 records and Diamond League victories in Stockholm and Rome. Gemma won three times in four races at 1500. Indoors, there were three British and three Scottish records. Jake Whiteman's 329.47 in his only 1500 metre race was the best British performance of the year, breaking his own Scottish record by 2.4 seconds and ranking third in the world. He also set a Scottish best performance at 1000 metres indoors. His main focus was in 800 metres, where a recorded victory in Ostrava at 144.18, a time only bettered among Scots by Tom McKean, and which ranks 11th all-time in GB. Congratulations to Laura, Gemma and Jake, three very deserving winners this year. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's programme, and thanks for joining me in this celebration of our sport in 2020. To finish off, it's time to welcome back the Chair of Scottish Athletics, Ian Beatty, to say a few words. Thanks, Brian. I think it's been a fantastic night. Clearly this year has been very different from previous years and uh, the, the awards reflect that. But we've seen some fantastic performances, some great innovation amongst the clubs and I think we can all be very proud of what's been achieved. I would like to offer my thanks to the team that put all this together, particularly Ali, Caitlin, Fran and Peter heavily involved in all of that but all of the rest of the Scottish Athletics staff team too who have done a brilliant job in very difficult circumstances. I'd also like to thank 4J Studios for their fantastic support throughout and for the support of this evening. But last of all I'd like to thank all of you. I think the way the sport in Scotland, the way athletics has pulled together I think has made us all proud. We've all achieved, we've all kept going and we've all done some fast, fantastic things. So well done everybody and thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks very much for watching. All the best with your athletics for the rest of the year. And who knows, this time next year, we might all be back together again, celebrating all that's great about our sport. Good night.